Thank you so much for being here. I am Casey Troy, your staff contact for Head to the Hill, and I am joined on this call by my wonderful colleagues, Lisa Peabody, Stephen LaFond, and Lainey Titus Samant. We are so glad you'll be joining us for Head to the Hill and representing the brain tumor community in your state on Capitol Hill. Uh, a couple housekeeping items. We are muting all of the lines to um, make sure we don't have too many um, background noises. So, um, and we'll also be recording this video. Uh, so folks who couldn't join live will be able to view this at a later time. Uh, questions will be taken through the chat feature of Zoom. We will send a message now so you can find that chat box. Feel free to ask any questions at any time and we'll either address them during that part of the training or at the end of pres the presentation uh, during our Q&A session. Uh, during our call today, we'll review logistics for the event. We'll also talk about the overall experience of Head to the Hill. Past attendees will often use these words to describe the event, inspiring, uplifting, emotional, motivating. You are traveling to Washington DC to speak to your elected officials and their staff about something that is deeply personal, your brain tumor journey as a patient, a caregiver, a family member, or a friend. I'll give you a second to read this. One of our veteran Head to the Hill advocates from Ohio gave this advice to first time participants. Her advice to embrace it is perfect. You may feel so proud and empowered one moment and shed tears while relating your story to your member of Congress in the next moment. As we said, this is a deeply personal experience and it's okay to get emotional. You've already made a great choice when you registered to attend Head to the Hill. 50% of advocacy is just showing up. You are working uh, to change things for the brain tumor community in your state and district, and this is extremely important and valuable work. Congress needs to hear about what matters most to patients, caregivers, family, and friends. If you listen to members of Congress or any elected official as they offer their support or opposition to a bill or law, you'll almost always hear them share a story about one of their con constituents, someone living in their state who will be affected by that bill or law. You and your stories are what make these issues come alive for the members of Congress and their staff, and we cannot have the same impact on them by just bringing in facts or statistics. They need to hear your voice and why these matters are important to you. During our training on Monday, May 8th, we will talk more about telling your story with impact and we'll provide you with more tools so you're confident and comfortable when you walk into your meetings. Now I'd like to introduce Lisa Peabody, our public policy associate who will update us on what is happening in Congress right now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. So, you know, you're going to be in, in Capitol Hill and you're going to be speaking with your elected officials. So let me tell you a little bit about what's happening and what we're going to focus on. So one of our asks will be about um, the congressional budget. And so right now we're, we're in a funny situation because we have two budgets going on. Congress was supposed to finish their work with giving um, money to the government in, in October, September, or October of 2016, but they didn't come to an agreement. So instead they created for this year, fiscal year 17, something called a continuing resolution. So instead of giving new programs funding, they just took all of the funding that we did in 2016 and just repeated it for 2017. That funding stream ends April 28th, which is next Friday. So we're expecting that they'll have a new budget in place for the rest of 2017 before we get to head to the Hill. So our work will be on the fiscal year 18's budget, the money for, for next year. And that process is already started. The first, the first piece is that the White House presents its blueprint. That's kind of an outline of how much each government um, area, how much money each government area should get. And that is what's, what's of interest to us because as, as advocates, we're, we're hoping that we can get Congress to put a big chunk of money into what we care about, which is medical research funding. 
that funding is in, um, is in something called the NIH, the National Institute of Health. And also the government gives money to NCI, another institute, National Cancer Institute, and the FDA, the Federal uh, Drug Administration. So all three of those organizations, we're gonna be, we're gonna be asking to make sure those are funded and with sustained and robust funding. The other thing that's happening is um, really exciting at the end of 2016 because of so much of the advocacy from, from people like you, Congress heard that we needed a, a bill to kind of update and reevaluate how the FDA, the NIH, and the NCI Institute sort of function. And they created something called the 20th Century Cures Act, and it, it passed in 2016. And as part of that, we need to tell Congress that not only did it pass, but we want to make sure the money gets given to them. So for right now, for 2017, 2017 this year, I mentioned that we were on a CR, but the one piece that they did add to the 2016 budget to make for 2017 is money for this 21st century cure. So again, that was you speaking out to your member of Congress, but we'll have to work that to make sure that this 21st century cures gets funded again for fiscal year 18. And included in that is something called the cancer um, moonshot. So this, uh, this guy, you might recognize him. He's our former Vice President, uh, Joe Biden. And uh, tragically, Joe Biden lost his son last year to, to a brain tumor, to a GBM. And at the end of 2016, President, then President Obama, suggested that um, the Vice President start a program called, that he called the Cancer Moonshot. And actually our CEO, David Ahrens, was on the advisory board, the Blue Ribbon Panel, on, on, for this program. And so again, this year in 2017, we wanna, we wanna encourage that the Moonshot continues to be funded for fiscal year 18. So that's what's going on, um, on, on in Congress right now. And so let me give you some ideas of you know, what you can do legislatively to be prepared for Head to the Hill. Now remember, you're gonna have a whole day training and we're gonna talk again about what's happening in Congress and what your ask is gonna be, what you're gonna be asking your, your congressman, what you need from your, your elected official. But before that day, if you wanna do some prep, it'd be great if you read the issue briefs that we're gonna send you. So we'll send you via email some, you know, just a one pager, a little bit about medical research funding, you know, one of our asks. And the other ask that, you know, we didn't really discuss, but we will at the training, is a Childhood Cancer Star Act. And that's another piece of legislation that we worked on and we've been working on for several years and we continue to work on and you'll learn a little bit about what, what it entails in that brief and then we'll study that during the day at, um, at our training. The second thing you can do is um, you might remember from, from government in school that you have three, everyone has three elected officials. So you have one in your district called your congressman and that's in the House of Representatives. And then you have two in your state called your senators and they're in the Senate. And so you can easily look up um, your, your congressman in this, um, in these websites or your senators in the other website. And then you'll see up in the top right corner, it asks for your address. You plug in your address and zip, there's your, um, there's your members. And what's really nice to do and what I, I always do before a meeting is to take a look at their biography and, and read a little bit about them. Sometimes they worked in the, in the same industry that you did. Sometimes they went to your university. Sometimes they go to your church. I learned that uh, my congressman, he lives like a mile away and we, we go to the same Starbucks. So it's a way that when you're there at a meeting that you can connect with this with this person and make a personal connection to, and, and have them remember you and you remember them. So if you can do those couple things, you're going to be great on the legislative side to be to be ready for Head to the Hill. So um, let me pass it over to Lainey and Lainey is going to talk a little more about preparing your story and what else is going to happen on that day. Thanks, Lisa, and hello, everyone. We're really excited to see you all in just a few weeks in DC. So I'm going to talk a little bit about ways to prepare for Head to the Hill and some more details on the actual event. 
So one thing we're going to ask that you can work on in the coming weeks is to um, practice telling your story. This year, as Casey and Lisa have mentioned, we're really focusing in on your brain tumor experiences and the importance of those stories to your members of Congress. So in the next few weeks, think about your brain tumor connection, whether it's your story as a survivor, a caregiver, or a loved one. And many of you, you know, if you think about it, you might not have told your story too much because um, it's evolved over time. Maybe everyone in your circle of friends or family has been along the journey with you. Um, so think of some ways that you can explain what's happened and share that. Um, and then when we come to our training on Monday, May 8th, we're going to spend a good chunk of time um, helping you to, to learn how to tell that story with impact and to have an influence on the legislation that we want Congress to support. And then um, what I'm going to talk about next is a story bank. And that's a tool that we have um, this year. It's a new tool from Soapbox Consulting. So if anyone um, has attended Head to the Hill in the past, you'll recognize the name Soapbox Consulting. They're the organization we partner with who provides our schedules. And they do all of the scheduling of our meetings on Tuesday. This year, they have a new tool um, that allows you to to create a form with your story and picture on it. So about a week and a half prior to Head to the Hill, you'll receive an email from Soapbox and it will have a preliminary schedule um, that is subject to change before um, the event, but it will also have a way to log into their website and you can do so via a computer or a mobile device. And we'll have preloaded questions in there that will help you to share uh, a piece of your story and you can go ahead and answer those and you can also upload a photo whether it be a picture of yourself if you're a brain tumor survivor or a picture of your loved one who either um, had a brain tumor if they passed away or is currently um, dealing with a brain tumor and then what you will do is if you can complete that by friday may 5th we'll print those documents out for you and it will create almost a flyer a personalized flyer that we'll provide to you on Monday during the training. And you'll have um, three of those, one for your member of Congress and two for your senators. And you can bring those with you. And, and what we'll, that will do is, is have that story that you'll be relaying to them written down on a document so they can refer back to it. And it will also have your address and contact information as well as a contact at NBTS in case they have any questions on the legislative policies we're talking about. So um, we really hope you'll take part in this this year. We think it's a really great tool. And just um, if you have any questions, let us know, but just try and get that done by Friday, May 5th, so we can have that for you at Head to the Hill. So some specific logistics here, because I know some of you planners are already thinking about what to pack. I know I am. Um, so on Monday, we're going to be in at the Hilton Crystal City in Arlington, Virginia, and you, you retire on Monday. Um, it's mostly training, sitting in meetings, um, talking to other advocates. So you can wear casual or business casual attire. Um, just a note that any of you who have attended Head to the Hills or other conventions at hotels, the temperature can always vary in the room. So layers are always a good idea. And then on Tuesday, um, we would love you to wear the t-shirt we'll be providing, the Head to the Hill t-shirt. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about why that's important for everyone in the group or as many people as possible to wear the shirt. But it's a great t-shirt this year. So um, for, for going gray in May for Brain Tumor Awareness Month. And you can wear that e either with business casual attire or um, some people feel comfortable putting it under a business suit. So whatever is best for you. And then comfortable walking shoes. We'll be showing a map of Capitol Hill in a few minutes, but um, there is a, a fair amount of walking um, between buildings or between meetings. A lot of people, I know I'll be doing this, um, will throw a nicer pair of shoes in their bag and then wear comfier shoes to walk around and then just switch them out before the meeting. So it's not undone. Everyone does that. So if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine as well. <clears throat> So the weather in DC in May really can vary. Um, the one year we had really torrential rains, the next year we had really nice warm weather. So um, it really can vary. So definitely bring an umbrella or raincoat. Um, I'm hoping if every one of you packs an umbrella, we won't need them because that's the way it works. So no one forget. <laughs> um, and then cell phones and power cords. It's important to have a cell phone with you during the day or at least a member of your 
group to have one because sometimes meetings can change at the last minute and Soapbox Consulting will have to reach out to you. And any of us who have been on the Hill before have noticed that um, cell phones can drain quickly when you're getting lots of calls or logging into the Soapbox app. So having a power cord is a great idea. Um, you can usually find plugs around in the cafeterias or also um, there's, there's space at the United Methodist Building, our home base for the day. And then if you're not using the story bank tool we're providing, um, please bring photos of loved ones. That's definitely an effective way to, um, to complement your story and have that impact on members of Congress and their staff. So when you come to Head to the Hill, we'll provide um, some documents for you. Um, I know that we've mentioned that we'll be sending you issue briefs. Don't worry about having to print those out and bring them with you. We'll provide a folder of participant materials on Monday, and those will be some training documents as well as our issue briefs. And then we'll also provide folders that you can bring with you to your meetings for members of Congress that will again include those issue briefs as well as um, information on the National Brain Tumor Society, as well as statistics on brain tumors in your specific state. We'll also provide you with bags um, and name tags so you can easily go around and meet other advocates from around the country and from within your state. Okay, so um, we'll be meeting together on Monday, May 8th at the Hilton Crystal City in Arlington. Um, please see our website if you need information on getting to the Hilton. There is a free shuttle from the airport. Um, it's close to a metro and parking is available for a discounted rate. So hopefully it should be easy for everyone to get to. But please let us know if you have any questions. This year, if you've attended in the past, we're doing it a little bit differently this year because now we have some longtime veterans, people that have been here for four or five years. Um, so we're starting off the day at 8.30 with a training for anyone that's new and it's your first time attending Head to the Hill. That way we can cover some of the basics um, of attending meetings on Capitol Hill and all of that. Um, and then we'll also during that time make sure to have some of those veterans there in the room with us so you can ask them questions and, and you can get to know them um, during that time. We'll also um, then meet together at 10 a.m. to start off the full training day for, for new participants as well as veterans. And we'll speak about each of the public policy issues we'll be asking Congress to support on Tuesday during your meetings as well as giving you an idea of what, um, what the uh, congressional meeting is like and what you'll be doing within that meeting. And as we've all mentioned before, we're really focusing in this year on how to share your story. So we'll have dedicate a, a large chunk of time to doing that and making sure you feel comfortable sharing your story and doing it in an impactful way. Um, we will have served breakfast, lunch, and uh, snacks, as well as the Advocates Reception. Um, we're once again excited to be joined by CERN and their Ependymoma Awareness Day and Butterfly Release. If anyone attended last year, it was a really inspirational event and really cool to see the butterflies released and some flying away, some landing on you. And it was, it was a really nice event. So we're excited that they'll be joining us again this year. This year, um, that is going to be a short walk or shuttle ride away from the Hilton. And then we'll join back at the Hilton following that event for our advocates reception. So once that's done, um, we definitely recommend, you know, if you want to have dinner and just have an early night because it does start early on Tuesday and it, it is a long day on Tuesday. So during the training, as I mentioned, um, you'll meet fellow advocates. As you're meeting people, please share your stories with them. I think that's a great way to also continue to get more comfortable, but also to make connections and meet advocates. I know a lot of people who come back year after year say it's the other advocates and building that sense of community and making friends um, that keeps them coming back year after year. So definitely feel free um, to, to introduce yourself around the other advocates. We'll learn the issues. Um, we're hoping to hear from a few different speakers, some on public policy and the importance of advocacy in Congress, as well as uh, speakers about um, the importance of medical research funding. And 
like I said, we'll share your story and you'll receive your schedule of meetings. Um, it will be a somewhat finalized schedule. If there are any changes, those will be updated um, to you on Tuesday morning. You'll have a chance to have all of your questions answered and meet a number of National Brain Tumor Society staff. And then you'll receive all of your participant materials. So I know that sometimes people ask if um, it's necessary to attend the training on Monday. And uh, we believe it's really important to do so because there is a lot that goes on and a lot of prep work to get you ready for your meetings on Tuesday. Okay, so Tuesday is the big day on the Hill. So we'll start off breakfast fairly early um, because we need to load our buses to Capitol Hill at 7.30. So breakfast, I believe, starts around 6.45, 6.30, 6.45. So we can join together then and then get on the buses from the Hilton and we'll be dropped off. Um, I'll show you in a few minutes on a map um, by the Capitol. And then we'll take a group picture at 9 a.m. in front of the Capitol. And from there, everyone sort of disperses. You'll have your meetings um, scheduled and you'll just follow your schedule and travel around with your group during the day. We'll also have a home base set up at the United Methodist Building, which is right by the Capitol. There we'll have refreshments and um, plugs for charging your phones, as well as just a place to come and, and take a rest or chat with other advocates and NBTS staff in between your meetings. Okay, so don't expect anyone to remember this, but we want to give you just a little bit of the layout so you can start to visualize um, what things look like here. So um, Casey is gonna be my helper and point things out as I talk about them. So we'll be dropped off this year at Peace Circle, which is in front of the Capitol. We're asking if everyone um, can possibly leave their luggage at the Hilton. It's gonna be a lot easier than having to, to bring it up the hill with you. But if there are anyone with mobility concerns um, or who have luggage, we will have a smaller shuttle that will go between Peace Circle and the United Methodist Building. Otherwise, you can walk to the United Methodist Building from our drop-off location. And that um, triangular building there that Casey is highlighting, that is United Methodist Building. So we have space in there. Uh, we'll have coffee and snacks and just a place to sit and rest between meetings if you have a break at any time um, and you'd like to come and, and meet other advocates. Uh, we'll take our picture on the Capitol spe steps, which is right where Casey is showing you at, at about 9 a.m. And then from there, everyone will head to their meetings. And I would say for the most part, meetings tend to start off on the Senate side, which are these three buildings over there. So you will have to enter security um, as you enter into the Senate side as well as the House side. But once you're in the Senate buildings, if you have another building next in the Senate, there are tunnels that connect the buildings um, underneath. So once you're in the Senate, you don't have to leave. Once you're in the House, you don't have to leave. You can just travel between the buildings that way. Um, and Casey, if you want to show the House side, so then if your meetings aren't in the Senate, they'll be on the House and there are a number of buildings right there. Um, to get between the buildings, you can either walk or there also um, are accessible shuttles that look like extended golf carts that are provided by Capital Visitor Services. Um, we'll provide the number for you if you want to schedule uh, um, transportation between the House and Senate side, um, or you can always just flag down one of those. And just to, so as I think we've mentioned this a little bit before, how Lisa was saying how many members of Congress you have, um, for the most part, you'll have at least three meetings. You'll have two meetings with your senators and then one meeting with your member of Congress. However, some of you um, may have more than one meeting in the House because you'll be paired up or group in a group with people who are represented by represented by different members of Congress. So you'll go along with them to their meeting and they'll come along with you to your meeting. But you will have at least three meetings throughout the day. Um, and I think that's most of it there. Um, if at any time you have any questions about how to get around, um, we will have contact information for you. And then you can always ask the Capitol Police. Um, so at the end of the day, there's a few options and it will depend on where you're headed. So Casey has her cursor near Union Station. I know some of you take the train from Union Station at the end of the day. That's where you can find that. Um, we will have a shuttle bus coming from Garfield Circle, which is right where Casey is highlighting now um, on the house side. 
Those will leave every hour starting at 2.30, heading back to the Hilton um, and the, with the last one leaving at 5.30. Alternately, alternatively, you can take the um, Capital South Metro, which is off to the, to the house side there um, if you're traveling anywhere. And um, I believe that should be it. And then, you know, the, the only other thing to remember about our day on the Hill with our meetings is that sometimes uh, members of Congress do have a lot going on and they have different um, hearings that can come up or votes. Um, so just to remember that that sometimes the schedule does change during the day and just if you could be flexible and just willing to work within those schedules, that would be great. Uh, something else to mention is that a lot of times people are scheduled to meet with congressional staff and we have heard over the years people being disappointed that they're not actually going to get to meet their their US senator or um, or representative congressman in the House of Representatives. Um, we will say that although some of you will meet your elected official, it's not a bad thing to have to meet with staff because they they are they have the ear of the member of Congress and they do all of the legwork and many times you'll see people who have really productive meetings with staff and within a day um, that member of Congress has supported the piece of legislation we've asked them to support. So um, they are the ones that really get things done on Capitol Hill. So make sure to, to treat them with that respect and just to, to appreciate the fact that you are meeting with them because it can be just as effective as meeting with the elected official um, themselves. And also just to remember, we are representatives of the National Brain Tumor Society and stick to your story and how it relates to our issues and just asking you not to bring up other matters or state or local issues. I know everyone um, has many things they're concerned about in life, not only um, one thing and medical research funding or the STAR Act, but if you do have other things you wanna to talk to your members of Congress about or their staff, we just ask for you to, to call them at a separate time or set up a separate meeting. And finally, just a reminder that this is a nonpartisan event and we are a nonpartisan organization. So um, especially this year, we are finding everyone is very passionate, uh, you know, on both sides of issues, both sides of the aisle. And sometimes even in congressional meetings, someone will say something about the other party or about the other group that's not supporting something. We just ask you just not to get involved in that. And even if you agree with them, um, just to stick to our issues, that's where we're gonna have the best luck, just making sure they're informed about your story and the matters um, that we're speaking to them about. Okay, and so now I will turn it back to Casey, who's going to talk a bit about creating a presence on Capitol Hill. Thanks, Lainey. That's a lot of great information uh, for everybody as they're preparing for Head to the Hill. So we want to create a presence on Capitol Hill so that everyone we come in contact with, as well as the larger brain tumor community across the country, knows that you are there advocating. We'll provide you with t-shirts, as Lainey said, and other materials that will show the members of staff you meet with, as well as anyone you pass in the hallway or the cafeteria, that the brain tumor community is making their voices heard on Capitol Hill. In addition to the physical items that we'll wear on Capitol Hill, make sure to take pictures and video of your experiences so we can spread the word. While NBTS will be sharing footage from the day on social media, we also want all of you to make sure you let everyone back home know about your experience, especially those members of the brain tumor community who are not able to join us in person on Capitol Hill. So share your pictures and your experiences on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can blog about your experience and encourage others to take part in the day of action on May 9th if they can't be in DC. They can still call and email um, and uh, contact their members of Congress to strengthen the message we're sharing. Um, we'll share more tips with you at our Monday training at Heads of the Hill on how to talk about the event via social media. Um, but right now, we'll suggest um, some hashtags to use, some how, how to use social media leading up to the event and um, during the event. So these are a few hashtags that the brain tumor community often uses on social media. Um, BTSM is brain tumor social media. BTAM is brain tumor awareness month, which is every May. Um, we use the hashtag head to hill, so head the number two hill and brain tumor. Um, 
if you post about the national about head to the hill it's also great to mention the national brain tumor society so um if you haven't already followed or liked us on these platforms definitely go ahead and do that and then you can tag us in your post uh, and use one or all of these hashtags to widen the audience of your post so um these are nbts's names on twitter facebook and instagram so you can find us easily um, and finally, you can start creating a buzz right now. Um, share that you're attending Head to the Hill with your friends and social media contacts. And you can also tweet your members of Congress to let them know you're excited to meet with them in a couple weeks at Head to the Hill. Um, we'll send more information and some sample tweets uh, in our follow-up email that we've mentioned a couple times. Um, and we'll include information about how to find your members on Twitter also. Uh, so you've created the buzz leading up to head to the hill and while you're on the hill, um, but once your meetings are completed, you still have an important role to play as an advocate. You have a great opportunity to continue to build your relationships with your members of Congress. So after your meetings, it's important to thank your members of Congress or their staffers for their time and remind them of your requests for support. We'll provide you with a thank you email template and we find it's best to follow up right away. They just met with you, keep, keep that memory fresh in their minds. Um, make sure to get business cards at each meeting so you have the staff person's email address so you can make that contact and continue that relationship. Uh, your group will also need to fill out a report back form on each meeting you attended. So these forms are extremely important. Uh, in order to plan how we focus our advocacy events in the future, we need to know what the offices said about the various issues and conduct any follow-up necessary. So if you provide us that feedback, we're able to um, learn more about that member of Congress and take the appropriate action. Uh, you can provide feedback through the Soapbox mobile site while in DC. You can do it on your phone. It's really easy or um, you know, your computer at United Methodist or when you're back home uh, through Soapbox's website. It's a, it's a pretty simple tool um, that you can use on a mobile device or a computer. Um, and so once you get back home, we'll provide you with a link for that, for, for a separate online evaluation for us at NBTS um, of the event. So you can share your expectations, ex excuse me, you can share your experience with us and tell us what you enjoyed and what could be improved in the future. This will help us make an inspiring and meaningful event for the brain tumor advocates who attend in the future. Uh, we will also send a template with, um, for all of you to be able to submit a letter to the editor to your local newspaper sharing your ex experience um, that continues with Brain Tumor Awareness Month activities and um, shows the people back home um, what you've been up to uh, for the brain tumor community. Uh, finally, you can stay in touch with your congressional offices and keep building that relationship. That will help continue to make positive change for the brain tumor community in the years to come. Uh, in June, we'll conduct a web training on staying in touch with your congressional offices throughout the year. So uh, consider joining us for that event and building on your time at Head to the Hill. So we're almost to the end of the webinar, but one more thing from all of you, please make sure to get in touch if you have any special considerations we should be aware of at, at Head to the Hill, including dietary restrictions or the need for mobility assistance or accessible transportation during the event. We wanna make sure um, we are ready for anything that comes up. Um, and if you can help us in advance, that would be wonderful. Um, and if you haven't already, please make sure to join the Facebook event for Head to the Hill. There you can see who else is attending from your state and ask questions of past participants, get to know everybody. Um, and uh, we'll send information about the Facebook event page um, in our follow-up email as well. And then finally, there is a Head to the Hill team for Race for Hope DC 
which takes place on Sunday morning on May 7th. If you're in DC early, please consider attending. It is an incredibly inspiring um, event. It's a 5K if you're a runner or a walker. Um, you don't have to participate in that, but I would recommend if you're in the area to um, think about attending even if uh, you, you don't run the 5K. It's just a really great community event. All right, so um, in a moment, we'll begin our Q&A sec section, um, but feel free to chat any questions you have right now. Um, we'll be going through that chat box and um, selecting questions to answer during the remainder of the call. Um, I also want to make sure, once again, you have my contact information. I know we include it in everything we put out, so you probably have it memorized, but um, you can email me. Casey uh, at advocacy at braintumor.org or call me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or talk about any concerns you might have leading up to uh, the advocacy event. We're just a couple, a little more than a two weeks away. Um, and so um, I'm happy to answer any last minute questions. Okay, so now we will go to Lainey to, um, who's gonna read some questions and we'll go through and answer them um, for anything that's come up during the meeting. Thanks, Casey. Mm -hmm. So I know we did answer a lot of these in chat, but for anyone that's not um, looking at the chat feature, we had a few different questions. There was one about leaving their belongings or luggage at the United Methodist building. We do have limited space there. So um, if it's at all possible to leave things at the Hilton and then travel back to the Hilton at the end of the day, that's the best option. Um, if you do have a short timeline and you're not able to do that, there is some space at the United Methodist building. Um, and then there was also a question on, will the webinar be able to, will we be able to watch the webinar again? We are recording this and we're going to have a link available that you can watch at a later time or that will also be available to anyone who um, is not able to make it today. And then I just got um, a question about how long will the day be? What time should I expect the meeting to end? So that's a great question. And um, it, it, it does depend um, on your schedule. So everyone is going to be scheduled a little differently. Um, the meetings will likely be starting around 930 after our picture. And some people end up having their meetings finish up around two o'clock. Other people have a meeting scheduled as late as five o'clock. So unfortunately, um, that's why we've asked travel arrangements to be a little bit later in the afternoon because we can't plan right now um, when your meetings will end based on your members of Congress and their schedules. But you should have a better idea as we get closer to the event and you'll see your schedule popping up um, through Soapbox Consulting. At each meeting, um, the other question was about how long are the meetings on average? I would say generally um, anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes is probably a good average. You do have some, if it's a member of Congress and they're running out to a vote, sometimes you'll meet with them for only five to 10 minutes, um, but maybe their member of staff will stay behind and meet with you for a little longer. Um, but I would assume everyone would be a, around 15, 20 to 30 minutes or so. Um, and then um, I know we had a, a great question from Sandy about will there be an opportunity for people at home to engage um, in our action day and head to the hill. So um, last year, if some of you might remember seeing this, we did an email on that day letting other advocates know that even if they can't be in DC, they should call or email or tweet their member of Congress that day, or they could even do all three things. So we will once again encourage that to happen so that you have support back home, even if there's you know, three of you in your meeting, but maybe there's 10 more people from your district that can call in or tweet member of, uh, your member of Congress that day. So it'll be great to have that support from the advocates back home. Okay, so I have another question here. If it's okay to just keep going here, um, Casey? Yes, please. Okay. Um, how many people are typically in each state delegation visiting senators, congressmen? Um, so that is a great question, and that really depends on which state you're in. So um, based on location and, and more ease of travel for some of you guys, 
the Virginia and Maryland delegations tend to be really large. Um, and sometimes you'll have 40 people in your delegation in those states. I know even in Pennsylvania this year, we have 22 people. So for your Senate meetings, every person in that state is represented by, represented by that senator. So all of those people will attend the meeting. It's always a little tricky how they hold those meetings because sometimes a group is so large. Um, but then what we'll do is your congressional meetings will usually be a smaller group. And that might be, you know, just anywhere from two to 10 people, depending on how many members of Cong how many people from your district are attending the Hill. But I would say for most states, um, what um, Soapbox Consulting does is they'll send everyone to the Senate meetings and they'll usually try and have um, groups of five or so um, in the congressional meetings. So if you're in a state where there's maybe 10 people at Head to the Hill, half of you will go to half of the congressional meetings, half to the others. Of course, if you're the only person coming from your state or if there's only a couple people, it will just be um, just that small group attending the Senate and House meetings. So I know that's not a very, a very clear answer, but, um, but it, will, it will really depend on your specific state. And you'll all get to meet with your state delegation, your other advocates for your, from your state during the day on Monday so you can plan for your meeting. And uh, Lainey, can I just throw out there that if somebody is the only person in their district that we do, Soapbox will try to make sure that they have a, a partner to, to go along with them so no one is having a meeting by themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. We definitely, if, especially if it's someone new attending, um, we're not just going to send you off on your own. So we will make sure you have um, a buddy to go along to the meetings with you. And someone else had asked if we should download the Soapbox app on our phones in advance. Um, I'll, I'll check in with Soapbox about that. So they at times have had an app. Other times they've just asked you to access the information through your web browser. And I don't actually know where things stand this year, if it's an app or just the web browser. So um, we'll let you know. But if it is the app, they do, um, they do walk you through downloading that during our event. Um, and I'm sure their email would include instructions for that. But I will double check and we'll update you all on email on that. Trying to look back and see if I've missed anything else here. We've covered most everything else. Anything else, Casey, you can see or can think of? No, I don't see anything else. Um, if we did miss a question, please feel free to email us. I'll get back. It's, it's advocacy at braintumor.org or, or give us a call. Um, and, uh, you know, feel free if something pops into your mind. We're more than happy to help. Um, and you can use the resources of former or past and current attendees, people who've been there year after year um, in the Facebook link. Feel free to post a question there um, and you'll get some great answers from people who have been there before. And uh, if that is it, we can close the meeting. Thank